Uh, I'm Sonan Bhattacharya, I'm from uh, uh, South Africa. So I'm not a con computer scientist and uh, in fact, uh, I found very difficulty to understand some of your talks and uh, learning. But uh, there, is a, there is a promise, basically. This uh, kind of uh, work, what we are doing, uh, we are trying to develop a uh, quantum computer in our lab. Mm. And I think it will be very useful if we can uh, tie it up with the open power system. Um, just um, to answer to the, uh, the question, um, actually you was asking to the previous, uh, previous speaker, is that uh, what is quantum, what, is, what do you mean by quantum system? That means um, you can do many of the calculations using a classical computer, supercomputer. So um, quantum uh, computer is, is uh, no way comparable to uh, any large computer. However, some of the operation which takes very, you know, kind of phase transition, which, uh, which, is, uh, which takes place very, very quickly, okay, super luminous velocity, uh, that cannot be explained by uh, classical computation and you need uh, to understand what is called quantum tunneling and that kind of uh, calculation uh, has to be done using quantum computer. A complex process, like uh, this is a downloaded um, things, uh, like a, a, a mathematical expression which is very complicated. If you take a S exponential uh, L to the power nu, and then if you take uh, S exponential to L to the power one third uh, ln L to over two third, etc., etc., uh, that classical computer which uh, does not handle this kind of phase transition or exponential things, it will take enormous time. But quantum computer, uh, the algorithm like source algorithm, uh, which is specially made for quantum computation, that will take a very little time to solve this problem. And that is uh, proven. So uh, a quantum computer will take uh, this job uh, within a few minutes. So this is taken from uh, IBM website. Okay, so uh, already we have observed uh, a deviation from Moore's law, and uh, and then uh, uh, basically uh, quantum, in quantum computation we create uh, lots of data, I mean plenty of data compared to uh, classical computers, and uh, we have to use a, a, a big system like a hybrid cloud or open solution like open power system. And uh, so that uh, um, requires, uh, basically, uh, if you look at this slide, even from IBM, uh, the, some of the areas uh, which can be, uh, quantum computer can be used. And so that is uh, searching big data, <coughs> analyzing big data. And then the second one is uh, uh, new materials, new drugs, new molecules, uh, even I think, of the elements, uh, what you are thinking uh, from the um, extraterrestrial uh, places, uh, machine learning, operation of brain, uh, neural system, uh, biological neural system, and cryptography. So these are well known, but uh, then um, to someone, I mean, just how to explain what is quantum system? Very simply, I can tell you, in classical system, you have bits, zero and one, always and uh, so you have either zero or one but uh, in quantum system you can have uh, both a zero and one at the same time so this is called a superposition of state so you can see here that uh, a state is written as a um, combination of two um, <coughs> zero and one so you can create a very large uh, string of data and um, this uh, sphere, this arrow shows actually the state for example is down is 0, up is 1 and something in between uh, 0 and 1, a combination and this is not there in classical computers and um, so since, uh, so just to explain to uh, someone is that you have two 
completely opposite states or rotation and if you put them in, in one box together, so here uh, let's say clockwise and counterclockwise and if you put them together in a box and that is called a quantum beat. So always you have 0 and 1 together. And uh, that is um, basically if uh, people try to establish in devices. So there are many different ways, at least uh, four different ways, the ion traps, and that's a very good quantum computer, but it does not have any solid state application. So you cannot make a chip out of this, but it's a very good quality. Then you have a superconductor linear optics, and um, that's what I'm going to talk today. And then uh, you have uh, some kind of quantum dots, diamond, uh, etc. And that is also quite successful. However, you cannot have many qubits um, joined together. And um, and the last one is uh, uh, the, for the future. Actually, Microsoft is developing this anion type uh, quantum computer, which is a uh, topologically protected. I mean, very high quality. So according to new scientists, uh, they have chosen uh, superconducting qubits as the, one of the most reliable and uh, most economic quantum uh, qubit system uh, compared to others. So uh, these are the uh, actually the unit of quantum computer, which is a qubit. So you can have uh, lithographically fabricated um, so we also do in our lab basically. So this is a made of aluminium uh, with a tunnel junction which is aluminium oxide. So aluminium is a superconductor and is separated by a junction, insulator, aluminium oxide. And that creates a loop <coughs> sometime. And that is nothing but a qubit, quantum bit. So this is a nonlinear LC circuit, and that is the heart of the quantum computer. Well, um, so uh, uh, this was developed at the University of Delft a long time before people used this kind of uh, two loops. So you can have a clockwise and counterclockwise current, super current, in this kind of loop. Well, um, now uh, this up to this part is easy. Anybody can make um, uh, this kind of qubits. Not a big deal. <coughs> but the, now the, the problem comes the measurement. And uh, this is one of the um, inside of uh, a quantum computer. So, I mean, you can download lots of pictures. So, what, it has, what is that? So, this operation is made at the frequency of, let's say, 8 to 10 gigahertz. So, you have um, hundreds of lines in a cryostat, and the temperature is uh, uh, as high as 10 millikelvin. 10 millikelvin, okay? And today's technology, uh, is, uh, I mean, permits uh, to have this kind of cryostat easily. That's not a problem. But um, this chip has to be placed in this kind of um, uh, system. I'm sure you have seen already in the Watson lab. I've seen uh, just uh, uh, on, on Tuesday. Well, uh, so mm, so e this uh, the temperature remain constant, and the chip has not should not be disturbed even by Earth's magnetic field. It should be protected. Mm. So mm, uh, so, uh, but uh, that is just the beginning of quantum. I mean, it's a very ordinary time. Now. <coughs> you cannot do lots of calculation using that kind of ordinary quantum computer. And then you have to make add function like functionality. That means you can have topological qubit, you can have a universal, sorry, unconventional superconductor, you can have high hybrid quantum computer. You know that uh, superconducting con community is the largest community. In, in condensed matter physics, I mean, and uh, uh, most uh, business uh, actually consider superconductors. 
So it's a very, very large community there working on this uh, quantum system to make it, uh, you know, more um, applicable to your work. And uh, now here, uh, here is your, uh, uh, the things uh, people use, classical adders, uh, classical logic gates, I mean all classical computers. And in quantum computer you have uh, this kind of lines also, but these gates are replaced by quantum gates. And there are a large number of uh, gates and that gives only a rotation of this atom, something like that. So you can rotate x, y, z direction basically. And just the basis of rotation of this uh, spin, uh, you can do the uh, calculus, you can create uh, not gate to C not, uh, Hadamard, etc., etc. gate. And um, now, uh, uh, what is the application of that? Um, so, just uh, you need, uh, like a uh, uh, previous speaker gave an excellent talk, he used, uh, uh, I think, um, thermodynamic equation you started, right? Uh, that's okay. I can uh, hear. That's okay. Anyway, so uh, this quantum computer requires uh, not the equation of state, it requires a Hamiltonian, basically. And Hamiltonian is nothing but energy expression, which uh, gives you the um, idea of interaction between spins, only spins, basically. How the spin interact, okay? And uh, based on that, if you know the Hamiltonian, and you have to convert this into a machine language, and then you can solve this, uh, this kind of problems, like uh, uh, polar molecules, array of quantum dots, and superconducting circuits, nuclear spins, etc., etc. I mean, biological problems, neural, sorry, uh, arrow of trapped at various kind of problems. So if you know the model, Hamiltonian, and if you, you can convert into a, a language and a transform, and you can do this, uh, you can solve the problem. Now just uh, for the hardware part, so this is um, some of the um, chip, uh, it is in the, in the fridge, uh, 20 millikelvin, 10 millikelvin. So here you have uh, the measurement system, and um, you know better than me these things. And this is a resonator, you can put the chip at the low temperature. And what do you do? Basically, you feed some power, microwave power, very small amount, and you get the reflected power, and from there, I mean, you can basically rotate the qubits, the speeds, basically. And uh, not only one, uh, a microwave uh, source, you have to use many, depends on number of qubits. So, um, initial, initialization and measurement has to be done using microwave power. So, this is a, a chip, basically qubit, and um, so you feed microwave power, you create a resonance, and this uh, sphere, which is represented as a qubit, that rotates a particular angle, uh, depends on the pulse width, etc., and creates a kind of uh, uh, oscillation. And you can tune the, uh, this oscillation quite accurately uh, because uh, this is a quantum circuit. And that comes uh, from uh, uh, radiation to atom interaction as a fundamental uh, problem. Well, um, so um, um, the thing, uh, uh, as you know, uh, everybody knows now actually that IBM has a 56 qubit, maybe more, I don't know exactly. Uh, you know better, you work for IBM. So uh, at least uh, IBM qubits are accessible. Uh, other qubits, how many and uh, what is the uh, state, uh, we do not know. Rigetti, uh, some of them, uh, Rigetti also you can you can use them. Um, so the next slide is a little bit uh, uh, shocking. So I have been trying to last couple of years to see people and to know what the story is. 
and uh, uh, so this is uh, from uh, DUA NASA. Um, I've been to uh, I've been Zurich, and even the Chinese, um, you know, our Chinese collaborator, Google, etc. Now, the the, the thing is that uh, even I met uh, that uh, Robert Welcome last week at uh, some of the conference. Okay, so yeah, although. <laughs> Uh, they are some of the top-notch physicists or uh, scientists. They do not know for sure what the problem we are going to solve with, with the quantum computer. I mean, exactly what, what to do. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, that uh, that problem has not um, appeared to us yet. But uh, everybody wants to have, uh, like, uh, Director of NASA said, "Can we have a quantum on my tabletop? I mean, uh, universal quantum. I don't want to know what is in there. I want to have somebody like calculator or iPad that I can mm, do everything on my de uh, desk. So, uh, so that is called uh, basically uh, fault-tolerant universal quantum computer. And uh, what is that?" Uh, basically, you create a kind of circuit. This is a concept. Basically, <laughs> you create a circuit hexagon, and um, you use some kind of unconventional superconductor uh, combined with semiconductor. You create a Majorana fermion and new particles, and uh, uh, you can create, uh, theoretically, you can create a large circuit, uh, infinite long circuit, using uh, this kind of architecture. Nobody has tested this, or maybe they are testing, we do not know the answer now at uh, Microsoft. Um, so, uh, this, is, uh, this, this works on, a, uh, on, a, um, on the basis of topological hardware, and that is um, basically uh, the this is nothing but quantum mechanics. You cannot explain those things by classical computer, basically. Now, uh, uh, the thing is that um, here is a here is a universal quantum computer, uh, which is very difficult to realize uh, at this time mm, because you need at least hundred qubits to uh, to say that you have a quantum computer. So what we are uh, trying to develop a quantum simulator to solve some of the problems. And um, now, um, this is not a bad news. I will explain to you why. So uh, here, uh, uh, the IBM, IBM QE. So I'm very thankful to, I mean, we are very thankful to <coughs> IBM and associates that uh, they have opened this kind of quantum experience. And you, it's, it's free of uh, cost. I mean, 19 to 20 qubits you can run anytime using your uh, calculator, uh, sorry, laptop. And uh, so this is uh, uh, basically, uh, this is the things uh, web based uh, uh, IBM uh, quantum experience. And uh, what you do, we, you have to really uh, create this uh, basically, um, this kind of quantum gates just by moving the uh, mouse. Now, but uh, this is uh, just, um, I think this is just a toy. I mean, may, like many people, I mean, you can solve some problems which are very, very simple. So you cannot solve some of the complicated problem and that what I want to tell in next two minutes. And uh, so mm, here is the thing, uh, um, uh, the reason uh, I think, uh, our inspiration is uh, uh, Mr. Ganeshan, who wants to have a, a IBM, what is it, quantum, quantum hub in Africa, in South Africa, in my university or India. So uh, it's a large investment. It's not like a, um, a small job, basically. We are trying to uh, you know, think about this matter. So now what, what we do, basically? So, it's not possible to explain the, what we do exactly here, but uh, how we are related to this problem, apart from the hardware, is that uh, there are some uh, new physical problems. Since our background is condensed matter, material science, so we think uh, we should show that how to 
uh, really simulate uh, a material, uh, a molecule at least, and to solve condensed matter problem, and which can match with the experimental data. We, we do the experiment actually, real experimental data. Um, our group um, are, are, are trying to develop uh, over years uh, this kind of um, uh, problem uh, of a super lattice when you have a heterostructure. I mean, how do you simulate a heterostructure? You can do it using classical computer and a standard package, but some of the things do not work that well. And uh, you have to start with a, with a proper, um, so, so IBM Q has been successful, Q is, has been successful to offer this material code. So you can create some small molecules with, a, with unknown properties and you can design uh, some of the things. Now I was talking to uh, a guy uh, at IBM uh, who wrote this kind of codes actually uh, on Tuesday. So you can, uh, this is a six qubit system. You can uh, create the interaction between two hydrogen atoms or carbon to, uh, or lithium to hydrogen, etc., etc. You can create this kind of molecules. But the problem comes if you want to really simulate a, a big molecule, like a, a diamond, graphene diamond structure, a real material. Uh, I think it's really difficult now. And this is done by classical computer. So uh, this is our actually target, um, how to bring uh, complexity in calculation so that we can solve a real problem like a disorder, uh, a real material which has defect, disorder, etc. Now, uh, it's not that uh, we are thinking, we are the only people who are, which are thinking. So, IBM, uh, I met the people like uh, uh, John Smolin. Yeah. So, he is uh, pushing this idea of random, simultaneous random bench, randomized benchmarking. And um, uh, it's still not there on IBM uh, quantum experience. So, he is trying to add those kind of things in. Uh, in the near future. So uh, to solve a real problem with the defects and disorder, and this is very important. And uh, what we can do using a computer, classical computer, has to be simulated on the uh, quantum computer. Well, um, this list can be very long. Uh, uh, even the state is, uh, this is a very new system. In fact, um, um, in fact, uh, uh, there is plenty of nice problems available which are to be solved, even the small scale, like uh, diamond NV centers. And NV centers is considered to be one a very good uh, qubit, but once you couple with a superconducting uh, diamond, a superconducting material, flux qubit, uh, the problem is uh, becomes very difficult. Even the simple molecule. So. We are solving this kind of problem in our group and uh, trying to find the occupation with time step using this uh, quantum simulation, uh, something like that. But once you add the complexity, it becomes non-trivial. Well, um, this is just a preliminary data. But if you have a question, you can ask me later. So mm, the last one is that uh, uh, spin-related problem. So what is uh, not solved uh, even by classical computer? Let's say you have a uh, uh, few spin magnets, and that is floating on a heat bath. How does it interact? And this is a, one of the most fundamental problem. So that is called spin boson model. So if you have a um, any anything related to magnet uh, is very interesting and complicated and not been solved by classical computer thoroughly. So that's the reason you need a quantum simulator. And uh, this is a 5 qubit system. It can do some parts, but uh, uh, actual problem is, uh, okay, so 
using this kind of simulator, we can simulate, we can draw the probability with the time scale. And this is the uh, quantum experience, basically. And uh, something like that, uh, we can also create uh, uh, the, uh, the answer using quantum experience. Yes, but this is just a toy model. So this actual model is, is a, when you add disorder to the system, that means if you have random scattering like this in the system, in a real material, uh, IBM QB cannot solve. So you have to develop your own qubit, you have to create your own uh, computation system. And uh, so uh, this is the, uh, basically the input, Hamiltonian, that includes all kind of interaction, decay, disorder, dissipation, etc. But uh, the problem is that it requires, uh, let's say, infinite chain, that means you should have uh, uh, an array of qubit which could be maybe 1000, 2000, etc. And that is not possible at this time from IBM. Um, so uh, so that, that limits actually our progress, I mean progress of uh, condensed matter physics in quantum computer. So, um, so why uh, we, we are I mean, talking all these things is that it requires a large um, infrastructure, to be, to be honest with you. You cannot just do it in a small uh, group or, sorry, <laughs> a small group or something. So it's, it's not just um, the job of the people working in quantum computers. It requires a collaboration or, or um, support from a big company. Uh, like open power, so you have the module. I mean, which can handle uh, the big calculations, and I'm sure you have been thinking on the quantum system. So it's not just software; uh, it's also hardware, which might be combined in a, a module like this. Uh, I think I made it clear that once you have many uh, qubits, let's say thousand qubits. Uh, the amount of data you will have, you cannot just handle easily. I mean, enormous amount of, because uh, this uh, qubits means uh, it's, it's a large matrix, basically. So the, um, the size of the matrix will be enormous compared to uh, just um, 0 and 1. So, so the thing is that uh, Q, uh, QS kit, uh, QS kit, right? QS kit, okay. And uh, that is uh, doing really great. I mean, uh, we, are, we are very happy that doing very well uh, just to solve this problem in a, in a, uh, in a very convenient way. Uh, but uh, also they are doing uh, the uh, development of the hardware, basically. So the, um, uh, both uh, the potential performance, quantum computer, and the difference between quantum and classical compu computers Relatively high computational demand can be placed upon a system um, running in such a simulations. So what I mean is that um, if you if you run uh, this is actually taken uh, from different websites. So if you compare uh, this uh, just an ordinary laptop and uh, uh, cloud-based uh, simulations. Uh, there is a uh, so if you if you use your uh, IBM Power um, eight or nine, and you combine with this uh, uh, um, IBM uh, Quantum Experience, so that uh, will will take much less time to execute the um, result. That is proven basically. So uh, this is a, this is a very uh, good thing that because you 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 are using a system which is a high power system. Uh, I don't know the value is the right 32 TV, mm, I mean, uh, large memory kind of things. So it's not just a quantum computer, it's an in, in the interface. So you use just the qubit and you connect it to the um, in a large infrastructure, basically. Uh, and that will definitely increase the speed of the computers, and that is very important. 
now uh, we have very small scale, 5 qubit, 20 qubit. But in future, imagine this is absolutely necessary. You cannot run quantum computer without classical computer. I mean, there's no way you can run, basically. So, mm, so here, here is the, once again, the last uh, bit uh, that uh, even the quantum annealer, D-wave, uh, I don't know whether you, you support them or not. Uh, so the D-Wave, uh, they use uh, 2,000 um, qubits, but not that kind of qubit, some quantum annealer, and that requires a huge support from classical computer, basically. You know, otherwise you cannot make use of the data. And uh, so to get a universal uh, computer, you need a classical computer anyway. So this is my last slide. Mm, almost okay. So the my message is that um, please do not underestimate the progress of quantum computer. So it's progressive. It's a difficult job. It's very interesting job. Uh, right now the number of qubits is less. But imagine five years before everybody said there's no chance for quantum computer. It's a elusive project. But right now it is uh, you, it's in your hand basically. So the number is going to increase very, very soon. And so it requires support from uh, the big computers. And uh, open power can bring the solution to this problem, basically. That is, a, I think that is a crystal clear, clear to me, at least. And um, so open power uh, should um, actually take a, a lead in this, in this, in this matter. Uh, just to uh, in the, tell you um, uh, before dinner that uh, who we are basically. Uh, so this is uh, our lab, mm. uh, running last 10 years almost. And we have all facilities for uh, making qubits, like using electron beam lithography, uh, deposition, measurement, and everything we have. Uh, even we are having a um, dilution fridge, so we can do most of the things in our lab uh, now. But um, uh, to make many qubits, I mean, we need collaboration kind of thing. So these are the our products. We can make uh, semiconductor chips, basically, uh, silicon nanowire, graphene, etc. And uh, this is the first time we have developed a diamond-based uh, qubit. Um, so that is uh, basically the junction which was just like a uh, Josephson junction, and that's a qubit first time in diamond. Um, and so basically, we are continuing with a, with a new material like superconducting diamond to make qubits. Well, um, uh, and uh, it has lots of advantages over aluminium because you can create. Uh, you can tweak the, uh, the Josephson junction uh, by material synthesis. You can create uh, um, some properties of superconductor which is not observed in standard metal. So that is our uh, motivation to create new qubits, basically. So, so this is the thing uh, we are trying to create a team with, a, with our um, actually um, known people uh, and, uh, and this is a uh, once you are successful we hope that we can um, create some applications in South Africa and uh, uh, this is the plan if you have if you have any idea in uh, quantum hub in Africa this will be a uh, revolution and uh, I think we are very well prepared for that because we have the facilities to support that kind of activities. Uh, so it's not that uh, um, lots of investment required, but we want uh, IBM or um, Open Power to you know, launch something in Africa. And uh, so this is like uh, the acknowledgement page. And this is the university uh, building, and uh, there is our lab, etc. Lots of tall buildings. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope you are still not that hungry. <laughs> Thanks for your attention.